a sales receipt. So if I hit the drop down, remember there's a couple uh, revenue forms we could use to record revenue, the invoice, now the sales receipt, and then we could use a deposit form. Let's take a quick look at the flowchart to analyze the process. So remember, at the end of the day, we expect to be getting cash at the end of the customer cycle that is. However, the cycle could be more or less complex depending on the industry. If we're in gig work, we might be able to wait till something clears the bank, use the bank fees to record revenue with the deposit form. But that's not the natural full service system that QuickBooks is designed to use. And we use we lose a little bit of detail such as sub ledgers for things like income by customer and income by item. But that might be well worth it if you can do that. Then a step away from that, still a cash based system, but not a system where we can just simply depend on the uh, bank to record the transaction would be a cash register situation, for example, in which case we would use a sales receipt. And then the full accrual system would be one where we do the books first and then we have to make an invoice. So last presentations, we've been talking about the whole accrual process. If you're in that kind of industry where the bank feeds fit in, where we said they could fit into making an invoice, trying to connect the bank feed to that, receive payment, trying to connect the bank feed to that, or recording the deposit and just simply matching the bank feed to that. And we could at the receive payment area, record that as a deposit on our end and match the bank feed to that. So we have a similar issue with a with a cash receipt or a cash register type of situation where we're going to get we're going to get sales that we're having at the point of sale. So we're going to want to record them at the point of sale. But usually if you're at a cash register at like a food truck or a restaurant or something like that, you can't simply wait until you finish the day's work and then deposit whatever cash you have or however the deposits are being made to the checking account wait till it clears the bank and then record it as revenue on your books using a deposit form with the bank feeds. You can't really do that because you're losing a lot of internal controls. If you're using a cash register, what you're typically going to want to be able to do is record the receipts as you make them at that point of sale and then be able to double check, say your cash sales to what you have in your cash register, physically counting the cash comparing that to the cash sales to make sure that they tie out. And then when you make the deposit into the checking account, if the cash deposits, you're going to deposit them as one lump sum. If they're credit card amounts, then the credit card company is going to have to package them in some deal in some way, typically, and then put those uh, into your checking account in some kind of format. So that means we're usually going to use the sales receipt form, even on a cash based system, not simply a deposit form when we're recording the transaction. So we can't do that by just waiting till something clears the bank and construct our books with the bank feeds then. So then you typically have a situation with the sales receipts where you might get multiple sales during a day. Let's just take the cash for example. And if you get multiple cash sales, then you have this kind of situation where you can't really uh, just deposit it into the checking account when you make the sale. Because you can imagine a situation, why don't I just, every time I make a sale, I use the sales receipt to basically increase the checking account. You could do that, but it would only work uh, if you've got if you got a separate amount that's gonna hit the bank account for each sale that you make. Like if they were electronic transfers or something like that, or you're receiving an actual check, because then what you're gonna to need to do is check that to the bank statement in the form of a bank reconciliation or in the form of the bank feeds. And that's gonna be part of your internal controls. But if you have a situation where you have multiple cash sales, then you're gonna to have to put them into that clearing account, which is undeposited funds or funds to be deposited, and then deposit them into your checking account in QuickBooks in the same grouping, the same format that is gonna be used on the bank side of things so that you can reconcile possibly with the help or the use of the bank feeds. So you've got that added step that's naturally almost always gonna be there because if you're in a credit card situation, you're usually gonna have multiple sales that you have by credit card or in cash that you're gonna to wanna to verify the sales that you have to, to the recording of the sales uh, receipts 
and you're going to want to deposit them into the bank in the same format as they're going to be grouped on the bank statement, which is not the same format on a sale by sale basis, typically because of the way the credit card company is going to work or because of the way you're going to group all the cash together and deposit it at one time, not having separate like $5 <laughs> deposits uh, as you deposit them into the checking account.